Hey folks, how's it going? Joey here with Simple DIY. And this video is a full review of the Fish Tech Miter Station. Before we start with the review on the Miter Station, I want to thank a few people that without them, none of this would even be possible. I want to thank Pure Bond for providing the wood material for this build. I want to thank Rockler for providing some of the tools that allowed me to easily figure things out fast because without them, uh, it would have taken me a long time to figure it out. And RZ Mask for providing the mask uh, for the dust protection. When I started this whole season, I did not have a dust collection. So having that mask really helped keep the dust out of my lungs. And last but not least, I want to thank Jay Bates for creating such an amazing project here with this miter station. I don't know if he just got lucky or if it was genius on his part, but everything about this uh, miter station thing just absolutely works. It's very convenient and I just absolutely love it. So Jay, I don't know if you're watching this or if you'll ever watch it, but man, really, thank you so much for providing the tutorials for this, for providing the plans and allowing us to create something and model it after something that you created. And I can tell you put a lot of thought into this, man, because it's, it's just absolute genius, man. So can't thank you enough. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with the review. I'm gonna cover everything from the sizes, dimensions, the features, what I like, don't like about it, what I would change, and I'm gonna combine everything together as I go through each section. So the first thing I'm gonna cover is the full dimensions of the entire miter station. I'm gonna use my cheat sheet here uh, to help me out with the specs a little bit. So from the end of that wall to the end of the cabinet is 154 inches in length. And each section, this section here is from the wall to here is uh, eight feet or 96 inches. From this end to this end is 34 inches. And then from here to there, uh, the end cabinet is 24 inches in length for a total of 154. Uh, from the very floor to the top of this uh, countertop is 36 and a half inches. Uh, from the very floor to this section is five feet uh, in length. And the reason I went with uh, that round or with that section on this part is I'm 5'10". So when I opened this last drawer at the top, I wanted to make sure that I could easily see in there, I could easily grab anything I want. And I just wanted it to be very convenient without having to get like a step ladder or anything. So, um, and then from the very floor to the top of this cubby, is six and a half feet and again the same rule applies for this section here I wanted it to be easily accessible something I could just go in there and reach real quick without having to get a step ladder and these are things that I regularly use anything above that from here and above I consider that long-term storage and it's for stuff that I hardly ever use maybe once a year or a few years so it's fine for a step ladder uh, you know on that in that case uh, the top countertop here um, from here to the back is 32 and a half inches and then the work surface here is 11 inches and if you add the little lip here this is three quarters of an inch trimming if you add that then it's like 33 and a half inches this section here from the, the, the top of the countertop to this section here is 23 and a half inches and then the depth is 16 inches all the way across and then the same thing for the cubbies is 16 inches deep uh, these bottom cabinets, these are 24 inches uh, deep all the way across. And then the width on these is 16 inches, 16 inches, and 24 inches on that. And then the actual drawers, uh, the depth of the drawers, all of, all of these are 6 inches deep. And then on these here, they change a bit. All the bottom drawers here are 4.5 inches deep. And then all the top drawers are 5.5 inches deep. And, and then this center section is just a, you know, a cabinet door. And I, we'll talk about that more in a, set, in a sec. And then right here, you'll see the, uh, the horseshoe uh, stop block system. And then this whole thing from here to there is five, and a, or five feet in total, which is the same length as, as here to here. All right, so now we're gonna cover the features and we're gonna start with the sink area. Now the sink area here from this end of the cabinet to there is there's three feet of clearance. And I just thought that that was a perfect uh, dimension size for what I needed it for, right? Uh, the, from here to the sink, there's like five and a half inches of clearance. Also there, I try to center it as much as possible. The actual sink is 15 by 15 inches. Uh, this is, I think it's what you call a bar sink. I got it at Home Depot many, many years ago. 
it was uh, on the original uh, workbench that was here. And I installed this like in an undermount uh, sink type of setup. And the reason I did that was uh, to, to extend, uh, to be able to extend the stop block. This stop block here is only five feet in length, right up to here. And if I need to cut anything longer than that, do like repeatable cuts, anything longer than that, then I just use the square here, put it right here, and I'll be able to go ahead and, and do it that way. Clamp it down and do my repeatable cuts there. I do have plans on doing like a permanent type of, uh, you know, stop lock here where I could just put it here and slide it down, clamp it down easily. But I still have to figure that out and that's for, you know, another day, another video, right? Uh, this section here, I believe it was on uh, part three of the series where I talk about this section and where I originally was going to put the fish tank up here, plants change. Well, instead of change, just taking this area out, I decided to go ahead and put the uh, the peg hole system there on both this side and this side. And on the back, I put the, the white wall. And before the original workbench, I had the peg hole system there and a the white wall, and I absolutely loved it. So I said, you know, that'd be a perfect area to just keep it the same. Now, one thing that I don't like is, or that I didn't like that I did here was, having all this separated like I had the white wall way back there it's just really inconvenient to reach back there and write what I need in my notes so the one thing that I'm going to change on this section is just swap these two out I'm going to put this peg system there and then uh, the whiteboard right here that's the only thing that I'm going to do there everything else is going to stay the same because uh, I really like it uh, this top part of the cubby man that's just a complete and utter mess I hate it and it's 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 partly my fault I just got to find figure out a better way or a better solution to to just clear things out and just organize things a lot better so I'll definitely later in later videos you'll definitely see me doing something totally different here this section here is my absolute favorite section of the entire miter station uh, we're going to start right up at the top I don't know if you could see it on the camera but right up there, that's my TV setup. I have it hooked up to my Apple TV. And that's really the only thing I need because right there I could get access to my YouTube, which I watch a lot. My Netflix, my Hulu, and my movies and all that good stuff. Uh, right here, the fish tank. Man, I absolutely love this section. Uh, I don't know if you guys, how many of you uh, follow me on Instagram, but right here in this section here, I put the Paul hybrid here and I do my dovetailing work and my chiseling work at the end of the table and I just love looking at the fishes and listening to it uh, it's just very common and very easy on the mind and then sometimes I'll go ahead and turn on the video and, and watch some YouTube you know if they got some new stuff uh, from some of my favorite uh, YouTubers uh, this section down here uh, this is another part that I absolutely love this is uh, my horseshoe stop block system I use the Craig precision uh, measuring system kit I think it's called it comes with fully loaded with the tracks and then with the these two things here and uh, I actually bought an extra one of these for the end cabinet horseshoe stop block so I could use it over there uh, everything else I had to build to spec I think this is like two and a quarter or two and a, and a half inches I can't remember right now up to that this is just for this clearance here uh, the depth of this is three and a half inches on the inside and then the wall back here is also three and a half inches which is you know the trimming for this section here and I really like this it acts like a sort of like a cubby I can put things in I usually keep small little things like screwdrivers on more keys uh, other keys and a lot of other junk that's not supposed to be there but um, I absolutely love this system now the one thing that I don't like about the Craig's this Craig system thing is this this I absolutely love I wish I would have bought another one to put it on the other end because I, I really don't need it because you could easily just pop it out and put it back there but this here um, I don't know if it's a flaw in the design or if I got a bad one actually I know it's a flaw in the design because the bolt I have is it's, it's screwed up but I could tighten this up as tight as I want right put this down and the piece of stock that I lay there, there's always a little bit of give. There's always a little bit of move right there. And I didn't realize that until I was doing some repeatable cuts. And a few of the cuts were off by just, you know, uh, that, that eighth of an inch or whatever. 
and I figured out that that's what it was. I checked the other one and the same thing. So I hardly don't use this for the actual stop block. I actually use this. This, when you tighten that up, that ain't going nowhere. It's very solid. Now the tape that goes here, the measuring tape, I actually didn't install it yet. And for good reason, I'm actually thinking of getting rid of this miter saw and buying the Bosch, the new Bosch one that they have. I think it's a sick miter saw and, and I really want it. So I don't want to go ahead and, and do that there because it'll be measured for this miter saw. So I'm kind of waiting on it. But I really don't need it because I, I still measure the actual board, uh, you know, put the stop, set the stop block and then that's it. So it doesn't take too much long. This here is another one of my favorite sections. This is what I like to call the library, if you will. Uh, these are just door cabinets that open up and into a shelving system. And right now this shelving system, I'm only using it for like to put my gloves in here, my waxes, my finishes, my stain. And it really wasn't meant for this, but I didn't know where else to put this at. So I just put it in here, it's a perfect uh, you know, height and it fits perfectly. So for now it's working until I figure out what else to put there, right? But this down here is just a, a slide in drawer and here have, I have all of my favorite books that I've purchased and collected throughout the years, ever since I started doing this whole DIY thing. Everything I know pre-YouTube, right, I learned from these books right here. I didn't have, we didn't have YouTube back then. Uh, so like right here, I'll show you one of my favorite all-time books. This is the first DIY book that I ever purchased. Um, I got this book sometime in 97, 98 when we first bought our, our first home. It was a fixer-upper, a big fixer-upper. And I knew nothing about fixing anything inside the home, nothing. And I didn't even have any tools. So I didn't have any money really to like hire someone to fix it. I think, oh, okay, I could do this. And I didn't have any of the proper tools. Went to Home Depot, I bought a jigsaw, a cheap one, the cheapest one that they had. I bought a drill, just one drill, the cheapest one that they had. And it came with a drill bit system uh, or, or whatever, a combo kit. And then I also bought a, a table saw. I don't know why I bought the damn table saw. It was one of those small little 10-inch Ryobis, but I got it. And I also got this book. And man, this book here, really, I learned everything from this book. I from tiling to fixing doors, installing sink, plumbing, everything I needed to fix my home, I, I, I learned from this book. And then from there, whenever I wanted to try something new or learn something new, I just went to Home Depot and bought their books. Outdoor projects for when I started putting, you know, making my outside side, the grass and everything pretty and all that stuff, wiring, landscaping, tiling, plumbing, the complete guide to home carpentry, uh, right here finishes, that's when I started getting into actual woodworking, like, I remember I started building game tables, like domino tables, poker tables, chess tables, uh, things like that, uh, all the way on down. Uh, right here, uh, building work sh wood shop workstations. <laughs> I built my first uh, work workbench from that book. And then this one here, is, this is one of my favorites that I look at all the time, at least once a month. Uh, these are just uh, cutoffs from the magazines. I'm subscribed to like every magazine out there, and they you build those up really fast. So before I throw them out, I go through them and I take out the projects that I would like to build one day or even some of the tips that I, I find very helpful and useful, I just cut them out and I put them in here. Believe it or not, I've built a lot of projects uh, from this little binder here. So I go through those at least once a month and just get rid of some of my old magazines. And I got a lot of them. I still got about 50 to go through, but uh, this is one of the latest books that I purchased. Uh, making boxes and chests. I'm really into making boxes, build tails and all that stuff right now. But yeah, this section here, I absolutely love. For the miter saw shelf section, there's really not much to it. It's pretty self-explanatory. I will cover some of the things like, like here that I'm definitely going to change and do something about, and the dust port. So with the dust port, I'm using that, that big dust port that, that Rockler sent me, and I just thought that it would do a, a very good job in collecting all the dust. Now, it does a very good job in collecting the fine dust created as, as I'm cutting, but the bigger stuff, uh, it seems to get collected back here. So I don't know if that's uh, a f design flaw on my part or is that's just the way it happens, but I'm definitely going to do something about it there to, to prevent that from happening so it could just go straight into the dust port. 
Now this section here, I, uh, it's just so much wasted space. And I'm definitely going to do something about it here, like put some either shelving systems or drawers, little small little drawers or something. But it's definitely, something's definitely got to change here. Uh, but I'm going to wait till I get the new miter saw for that. That way I can get the proper dimensions and then, then measure everything out according to that. Now this section here is very, very useful. Um, I'm just using it for all of my measuring tapes right here, right here and uh, this little magnetic uh, strip here for all the drill bits that I mostly use all the time. And then right here, these are like my oldest, oldest measuring tapes, the 16 footers. Those are the ones that I usually always use. And then the 25 footer, I always use that for usually when I'm outside doing bigger projects uh, out in the yard. And then um, right here, the cubbies, there's really not much to it uh, either. I got my drills right here readily available so I can just grab them and I've got the bits where I can just put them right here. So this has been uh, pretty handy for me. I don't think I'll change this much on this section. And then right here, this is just a little uh, little snapping thing to hold the pieces of paper. I found this as I was cleaning. I have no idea where I got it from, uh, but I just put it in here and it's, this was the last project that I did which was a lumber cart which you'll be seeing the videos and for this last section here I'm just going to cover it real quick because I'm getting a lot of questions on this area on why I did the drawers the way that I did them now this section here I knew that I was going to put these heavy jugs here and I knew that there was only enough space for two drawers so when I first built this drawer I was going to build it a full drawer and I was looking at it and I said man that's just so much wasted material so I cut that drawer in half and that's what I came up with. I mean these jugs are pretty heavy uh, and, and they hold themselves pretty much so that's really the only reason why I did them that short and I probably could have gotten away with half of that with like a three inch depth just for these jugs but I went with the safe cinch uh, just to keep it easy and um, it's worked out well for me. And the last thing that I want to talk about here is the trimming. For the trim, all I used was the whatever left over that I had from the panels that Rockler gave me. I just used it for here, for the bottoms, for all the trim in here that you see here. And then whatever leftover cutoffs that I had, I used it to do the drawer fronts. Um, and then right here, if you notice it here, um, I was actually wanting to cover this whole area with this trim, but I ran out. So I wanted that look of like, it's inside of the actual miter station. I didn't want any of these things uh, visible or showing. So, Rocker, if you're watching this video and you have any of this stuff left over, send it my way so I could finish this off. So there you have it, folks. That's my review of the Fish Tank Miter Station. All in all, I'm very pleased with it. I'm very, very happy with it. There's really not too much that I would change on it other than adding a few things here and there. Uh, later on to make it more useful but other than that it's really close to perfection design wise and I really hope you enjoyed this entire build series it was a lot of fun for me it was very rewarding a lot of this stuff was a first time for me so I learned a ton from this project build alone in the next video we're gonna be talking about the dust right collection system and how I turned that from a one stage into a two stage System. So make sure to subscribe to be notified when the next video gets published. Like and share this video if you really enjoyed it. With that said, this is Joy with Simple DIY. Peace. I love you for free. And I'll see you on the next.